Today, we're gonna to be giving our untextured and extremely lazy 3D renders some new life. Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn How to Edit Stuff. My name is Ian and today is my very first Blender tutorial, which is very exciting. If you're a video editor or a motion designer, which I'm assuming you are, which is why you're watching this video in the first place, and you want to incorporate 3D into your workflow, I could not recommend Blender enough. It's super powerful, it has a really amazing community, and best of all, it is 100% free. Go to blender.org, blenderproject.org, I think it's just blender.org, and you can download Blender 100% for free right now, today. And the best part about this video is even if you're terrible at Blender, which I feel like I am, the end results are still going to look pretty awesome because we're going to be taking those untextured, lazy, unstylized renders and passing it through Gen 1 inside of Runway to stylize our scene and make it come to life. And honestly, this method is pretty amazing for testing different vibes and different aesthetics for your 3D scenes from amateur all the way up to pro level. It doesn't matter where you fall on that spectrum. This is going to be pretty awesome. Now, if you're watching this video and you know me, you've seen some of my other videos, I get pretty excited. I talk real fast about things that excite me. So I'm going to try to explain everything as simply and as straightforward as I can. But since this is my very first Blender tutorial, hang with me. If you want to see more Blender tutorials from me in the future, definitely give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you want to see more tutorials of this type. Don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Thank you in advance. Let's dive in and make our gross untextured 3D renders look better than gross. All right, guys, we did it. We are here for the first ever Blender tutorial on learning how to edit stuff. Very exciting stuff. We've got picture in picture going on here. I'm utilizing my webcam finally. The mic is in front of my face. Things are happening. We're feeling pretty good about it. I'm using Blender version 3.5.1. There is a newer version of Blender out at the time of recording this video, but everything that we're going to cover today is very basic and will likely apply in all future versions of Blender as well. So uh, as for my render engine, I'm going to be using Eevee today, which is the lower quality, lower resolution render engine in comparison to cycles inside of Blender. And that's because we're trying to go for low effort, low quality, because we're going to stylize it later using Gen 1. So we don't have to do anything fancy with our render engine. We can keep our computer operating at a normal efficiency and not stress test our GPU or CPU, which is fantastic. Um, all right, so the first thing that we're going to do inside of Blender by the way, uh, I'm going to assume that some of you know enough about Blender, but if you don't, you can pay attention to the bottom left-hand corner of my screen here, where you will see all of my key commands and everything that I'm doing inside of Blender. But basic movement controls, holding down the scroll wheel will orbit around an object, holding down shift in the scroll wheel will allow you to go up, down, left, and right, and using the scroll wheel on the mouse will zoom in and out. And those are pretty much the basic controls that you'll need for this tutorial. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is hit A to select everything in our scene, and then hit X to delete it. We want a completely clean slate for this tutorial. And then now we're going to leave Blender and we're going to open up cgtrader.com where we are going to download a free model to use for our scene. And if you don't have an account, it is free to sign up. You do need to have an account and be logged in to download your assets. So definitely do that right now and then come back to this when you're done. Anyway, uh, we're going to search for creepy house because that's the vibe that we're going for today. And uh, I don't want to pay for any of these, you know, the $39.99 for this. Th that's ridiculous. So we're going to sort by free by clicking this little button right here. And it's going to give me all of the free assets that I can download from CG Trader, which is an amazing resource. Definitely bookmark this one and find a house that jumps out to you and meets your needs, meets your requirements for the project. Let's see. This one right here looks pretty good to me, Medieval House. So I'll click on that one and I can download it for free. Click on free download and it's going to make you wait 20 seconds before you download your uh, asset. So let's see you in a second. Great, you have downloaded your assets and sometimes it comes as just one zip file. Sometimes you can download just the FBX or the .obj independently. Uh, CG Trader just kind of works differently for each asset, but I have everything that I need here in order to do what I need to do. So uh, you definitely have to note the file extension on the file that you download because you'll need to know that when you import it into Blender. I'm gonna import the FBX file. So I'll come right up here in Blender to File, Import, FBX, and then just find that file on your computer and click import FBX. And it's going to import uh, pretty big. And if you click on this item right here and you hit N on your keyboard and come up to the item tab, uh, this is 24 meters by 20 meters, which is huge. And if your blender is in meters and not feet, you can come over to this little cone icon here, go to units and change this from metric to imperial. And now we can see that this house is 78 feet by 68 feet, which is huge. So with that item selected, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to scale on the X, Y, and Z axes and shrink this down real tiny. Let's see, four feet by three feet. That's great. Hit period on your number pad, which will zoom into that object right there. Nice little handy shortcut. And now we have a smaller house, which is great. We don't need a life-size house for this tutorial. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is add a ground plane by coming up here to add mesh plane. And then that item's automatically gonna be selected when it's added to our project. Hit S to scale it along the X and Y axis. Now I'm gonna grab my house and hit G to move my house, but you can hit Z to lock it to the Z axis, X to lock it to the X axis, or Y to lock it to the Y axis. So I'm gonna lock it along the Z and just push it up very, very gently just so it's resting on top of that ground plane. Fantastic, looking really good so far. The next thing we're gonna do is create a background. If you have an image on your computer, great. If you wanna generate one, awesome. I'm gonna generate my image in Runway. Come down here to the Generate Images tab, go to Text to Image, and then swap my settings uh, to be 16 by nine at 2K resolution for images. And I'm gonna say a super creepy forest at night. Generate. Pick the forest that most speaks to you. I really like this one up here. So I'm gonna download that to my computer. I'm just gonna to toss that right onto my desktop. And uh, you know, cause I'm a psychopath, whatever. Let's go back to Blender. And then now what you'll need to do is enable a Blender add-on to import images as planes. And it is called, if you go up to edit preferences, type in in the search box here under the add-ons tab image, and make sure the checkbox is checked next to import images as planes. And then once you do that, you can come right up here to file, import, you guessed it, images as planes. Grab that file off my desktop, import image as plane. I'm going to scale it up real big and then hit GZ to bring it up above my house so I can see kind of what we're working with here. And I can't see anything. And that's because we're in the solid render view. I'm just gonna go right next door to this guy here, which is the material preview render view. And that's gonna allow me to see my image uh, and kind of what the orientation looks like as well. So I think it needs to go this way right here. So with that image selected, I'm gonna hit R and then X to rotate on the X axis. And this is just a free rotation, but if you hold down control, it'll snap to five degree increments. And you can see those increments uh, up there in the top left-hand corner. So I'm going to snap it to 90 degrees and then RZ. And I'm going to also snap it this way to 90 degrees and then G X to kind of push it into the background here, just so it's sitting behind my house. And it looks like from this perspective that there's a creepy woods in the background. And that's gonna be um, more important when we add our camera, which I believe is the step right now. So uh, come up here to add and go to camera. And that will just throw a camera into your scene. And how you enter that camera is you hit zero on your number pad, and that will put you into the camera view. And right now we're kind of underneath the ground. And what you'll need to do is come over here to the view tab and check this box that says camera to view, which will allow you to now pilot that camera and place it in your scene where you want to place it. Right about here in our scene. And then we can uh, reset the rotation here to just be 90 degrees on the X axis, zero on the Y and negative 90 on the Z. Now we are looking pretty good and we have that camera centered up. So now what we're gonna do is create a very, very simple and basic camera animation. With our camera selected, why do we have two cameras in our scene? I'm gonna delete that one, hit X. Uh, we're just gonna be focusing on this camera. And with that camera selected, I'm going to right click where it says location and go to insert keyframes. And then the same with rotation, right click, insert keyframes, come down here on the timeline and let's scrub to about, I don't know, hundred frames. And let's push that camera in just like so and reposition it. So we're zooming in essentially to the front door of this cabin. Again, right click, insert keyframes, right click, insert keyframes. We aren't doing any rotation. This is just good habit. I like to do that anyway. And now when we play this back, our camera is uh, very gently gliding into the front door of our cabin and we have a very basic animation. This is going all the way to 250 frames, which we do not need. I'm gonna cap this at 105 frames. So there's a little five frame overlap between the end of the animation and the end of the actual video. And now we have a nice smooth camera animation going into the front door of our cabin. So at this point, we're pretty much done with everything. Well, we just need to set everything up to be rendered. And what I like to do personally is right click on the little divider between my viewport and my scene collection here and go to vertical split and then pull this line right to the middle of my uh, screen here so I can set the right side to be the rendered view and the left side to be the material preview view. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on viewport shading to rendered view. And you can see that everything looks really, really dark uh, and it doesn't look great. I'm gonna come up here to view and just kind of turn off all these assets here so we can get a better picture of what's going on. And everything is gray because if I go to my world view here, uh, everything is just this gray color. And so I can click on this color and I can increase it to white, which will start to bring everything up. But I'm starting to lose a lot of details um, here. And that's because we don't have any lights in our scene to give us some of that detail back. So what we're gonna do is come down here, maybe make this a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna add 
uh, hit zero to get out of my camera view over here. And what I'm going to do is just add a light to my scene. So add light and I'm going to add a sun and the position vertically of the sun doesn't actually matter for your composition, but I like to put it in the sky because that's where the sun goes. So G, Z, put it up in the sky right above my house here. And then with that asset selected, I'm going to hit R, R on the keyboard. And now I can freely rotate that sun to give me some nice lighting in my scene. You can see we're starting to get some nice dramatic shadow fall off on the house there. And we're starting to see some of that detail in the door that wasn't there before because now our scene is being lit by this fake sun. So right about there looks pretty good. If you wanted to, you can come up here and add another light. Uh, this time, let's add an area light. I'm going to scale it up pretty big and move it along the X axis, move it along the Z, and I'm going to rotate it along the Y axis and point it towards my house so I can light up the front of that house a little bit uh, so it's not so dark. And then in the light materials uh, tab down here, this little light bulb, your light has to be selected in order for you to see that. I'm just gonna turn down the brightness of this just so we're getting a little bit of a spotlight effect on the ground there. Nothing crazy. If I turn this light on and off, you can see it's just kind of illuminating the front door and the ground. And I just want that spotlight effect in my scene. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the last thing that we're gonna do is just add some materials to our scene to differentiate the colors. So not everything is that like stark white with the ground selected. I will come up here to the materials tab and go to new material and let's just name this ground. And then I'm gonna change that color to a dark green, like a foresty floor color. And I'm gonna crank up the roughness all the way to one so that we're not getting any weird uh, environment reflections from that ground. It's just gonna be a nice matte color. And our house, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Delete the materials that are on the prefab model, new, and then we're gonna crank up the roughness to one and we can make this a stark white as well. Click on our background layer and again, crank that roughness all the way to one so that we're not getting any weird reflections. Uh, you can see that the shadow fall off is hitting my background a little bit. So what I'll do is actually take this, hit G X and push it further into the background just so we're getting rid of that shadow, scale that up. And now we are clear of that shadow. So to see a single frame preview of what your render will look like, you can hit F12 on your keyboard and that will render a still image of your scene and everything is looking pretty good so far. Again, we don't need to do anything crazy. We are going for low effort, uh, low poly, low everything on this render. So I feel confident I am ready to render this thing out. So we are going to go right over here to this camera render properties and I'm going to make sure to turn on ambient occlusion, which is going to give me a little bit more detail in the crevices of my house. And we can also turn on high quality normals under the performance tab. And also we can do high bit depth shadows if you want, not necessary for this task, but that's something that I like to do. And now come right down here to the output properties. And we are going to turn this from PNG to FFmpeg video. And then under that, under the encoding property, we're gonna leave it at Matroska, which is gonna be a .mkv. And we're gonna change this from medium quality to perceptually lossless. And so we're gonna be rendering an MKV file, perceptually lossless, and then we're gonna convert it with OBS after this. It's a very simple process. And then just make sure you choose your output directory under output, give it a name right down here in the name field, and then click accept. Now all you have to do is come right up here to render render animation and this will render fairly quickly if you have a decent gpu or cpu on your computer um, and we're just gonna wait until this is done and then convert it okay that video is done uh rendering and so now what we're gonna do is open up obs it is free to download you go to obs project that's i'm gonna butcher it i'm gonna put the website up on the screen right now go there download it for free and then once you've downloaded and installed obs you can come right up here to file remux recordings and then you're gonna find that recording on your computer and click remux and that will make it an mp4 now go back to Runway, go to the Generate Videos tab, and then open up Gen 1, and you're going to drop that MP4 right here where it says to upload your file. All right, there we go. I've got my untextured render loaded into Gen 1, and I am ready to do some animation. So there's three different options for you up here on the right-hand side. You can either use an image reference, you can use one of the Runway presets, or you can type in a text prompt. A graphic novel illustration of a cabin in the woods. All right, great. Tool down the advanced options here. We're gonna turn the structural consistency down to one and the style weight up to about 11 or 12. And then I'm also gonna crank up the frame consistency a little bit to about 1.25 and hit preview. And this will give me four image previews that are gonna stylize a graphic novel illustration of a cabin in the woods onto my untextured 3D render. And I can actually see what that's gonna look like when it's finished rendering. So we can pick one or many of these if we want. Let's generate this brown one, that one's pretty cool. And this black and white one is also pretty cool. And in just a 
couple of minutes, Gen 1 will style transfer that onto my cabin and we'll be able to look at it and say, wow, that was really cool. And I did that all from Blender, not knowing anything about Blender. <gasps> like and subscribe. Similarly, if you have an image that you want to generate in Runway and use the image prompt to influence your cabin, I have another graphic designy kind of cabin look right here. I'm going to click on that and I can leave the settings exactly the same. Click preview styles. And now my previews here are going to look more like my reference image and less like the text prompt, which didn't have a reference image. But yeah, you can see that the, uh, the colors and the styling are very different from the ones with the text prompt. So let's generate a couple of these as well. Uh, this brown one, I like the shadow, the contrasty shadows here. That one's pretty good. And let's do this one over here on the right hand side. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what we've got. Amazing, and it took us like no time at all. And we got a really cool stylized 3D render that if I were to do that in Blender traditionally, it would take me a really long time to achieve something like that. And the fact that I can go through multiple iterations in such a short amount of time really makes this method truly amazing. And of course, you don't just have to do creepy cabins in the woods. You can literally put geometry in a scene just like this and stylize it in infinite ways, or you can get prefab, pre-animated characters, throw them into Blender, and now all of a sudden you're doing this with people and humans in your scene, and it just becomes this really cool, very quick, creative, just infusion into your otherwise lazy renders. Either way you look at it, it just opens up the creative possibilities to an entirely new dimension and another level, which is what we love to do here on Learn How to Edit Stuff, is open your brain to alternate dimensions. And with that, I would like to thank you for watching this video, my very first Blender tutorial. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I now just have the self-confidence to start doing it, so it's an exciting time for me. What you could do to validate my feelings is drop a thumbs up on this video to let me know that you want more Blender tutorials from me in the future. Also, don't forget to drop a comment down below and of course, subscribe to the channel and check that notification bell if you're a real OG. And uh, that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching this tutorial. My name is Ian, this is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and I will see you in the next one.